What's going on guys? It's Nick from Philo here. I'm going to try something a little bit different today. I'm going to try like a make a song on the spot kind of thing or at least make like the initial idea of a song. I'm just going to work for a little bit, see what I come up with, see what I can do. Um, if you guys haven't checked out our other tutorials, we do have a couple others on our channel, uh, production tutorials and song walkthroughs and things like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hop in here. Also, if you haven't heard our music, you can check us out on Spotify or SoundCloud.com slash Philo Music. I've got a blank Ableton project pulled up here just with my preset template that has some uh, groups of audio tracks in it set up ahead of time. Um, I've got the BPM set to 90. And what I was thinking is that I would just start with like some guitar chords. Um, so let me go ahead and just plug in the guitar microphone. And then uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and start with like these four chords. <laughs> It's like the most basic chords. Um, I'm gonna try and make something kind of simple and poppy. So we will see how that goes. So let's go ahead and lay this down and maybe maybe I'll do like a, something like that. So let's see how this goes. I'm gonna see if I can record it real quick here. Um, let me just uh, make sure that's set up right. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see what we can do here. So that's not too bad. I'm going to start with that. Um, so let's just make sure that it's in time and everything like that. Um, what I'm going to do is push it back a little bit so we can get it into this kind of four bar loop here. Um, and then add a little crossfade at the beginning. Okay, that should be fine. Um, and then what I'm going to do is process this through a plugin called CLA Guitars made by Waves. It's a good go to guitar plugin. I've got some acoustic presets. Let's try this one. Right, that should do fine. Um, normally what I might do is kind of delete some of the noises in between chords, but I'm just going to leave it for now and see if it might give it a little more natural sound. I'm going to run it into a compressor. Uh, this is CLA, LA-2A style compressor from Waves um, with an acoustic guitar preset. And then I'm also going to maybe throw an EQ8 on there and just make sure we're not getting anything that's down in the sub range in that guitar that we don't need. All right, cool, that should be fine. So let's go ahead and maybe add, I'm thinking, uh, piano. Uh, I usually like to start songs with just like a simple piano. Um, and uh, for that, I'm gonna use, um, I'm going to use this Alicia Keys piano plugin in the contact library. Um, and I'll go ahead and just add some MIDI here. Um, and let's go in and choose Alicia Keys piano and just make sure. Let's just choose a random preset here. I'll go with um, small studio. How about? Okay, cool. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get these MIDI notes in here. Um, And then let's see if we can play around with adding some additional interesting notes in these chords. That's a little too sad. I like that note, but it's a little too sad. All right, that sounds pretty good. One thing I like to do with the piano is go in and turn the uh, timing grid off and then kind of offset the notes a little bit so the piano sounds a little bit more natural. Um, as if like a person was actually playing it. Okay, so there's our chords. I'm going to copy and paste this MIDI to another MIDI track so we have it for later. Um, and then let's EQ the piano a little bit. So I'm going to throw an EQ8 on here. Um, and I'm just going to cut out the low end of that piano. And then let's add, instead of using sidechain compression on some of this, I'm just going to use Nicky Romero's Kickstart plugin to make things a little easier. So that sounds pretty cool. Let's see if we can add another sound here. Um, I've got, uh, well, let's go to Serum and see if we can add something from Serum here. Let's try the Smooth Keys one. 
Maybe I'll put this one an octave higher. And then let's go in here and then. Let me turn that off. Let's give them some voicings and just make sure they're detuned. Uh, not too much. I'm going to increase the attack. Okay, again, I'm going to run this into uh, an EQ8. Um, I'm going to add, I don't know, let's add a saturator on this to warm it up a little bit, maybe. Cut out the low end. Maybe give it a little boost in the highs, and then I'm going to add a uh, kickstart plugin on this as well. I'm going to turn things down a little bit to avoid clipping later on. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is sometimes I like uh, my pianos to actually be a little bit more narrow, to so have something uh, in the kind of in the mono uh, range just coming through. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit because that other sound is pretty wide. Just gonna bring it down a little bit. All right, that doesn't sound too bad. Let's see if we can add one more sound, like pad kind of sound in here. Um, I've got probably some pads saved in here. Um, I'm gonna add this one. This one's called a Wheat Thin Bouncy Pad because I made this for the Wheat Thin remix that I created a while back. Um, let's see what this sounds like in here. It's got that auto pan on there using it as kind of an LFO. Um, and I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is cut the highs a little bit out of this one and leave the high end in this one because this one's sounding pretty warm. So I'll let this one hit the mids. And then maybe what I'll do is run this into a uh, Fatso plugin by Universal Audio. Um, this plugin's kind of like a warmth generating plugin. I'm gonna use a slow attack. There's a compressor in it. So you can hear that warming up a little bit. I'm also going to increase the BPM to 95. I think this could be a little bit faster. Another thing I'm going to do on my synth bus here is just add an EQ3 and then cut out everything below 90 hertz or so just to make sure there's nothing too low coming through. All right, let's see if we can add a kick drum here. Um, I've been using the Irene sample pack from Medicine quite a bit lately, so see if we can find a good kick in there. Um, all these medicine packs are pretty awesome, uh, by the way. Uh, let's see if we can find something here. Kind of like that. Let's drop that in there. Real simple. Um, another thing I'm going to do is layer this with another kick drum. Um, let's just use a cashmere kick for this one. Uh, I think I could use a little more punch here. Um, that's pretty punchy. Um, so I'm gonna layer this one in with that other kick, uh, turn it down a good amount. And then what I'm gonna do is EQ out all the low end from this one. So we're just getting that kind of punchiness out of it. So it's just like, we're just getting this, that click. Sound pretty good. Um, another thing I'm gonna do is copy and paste this kick drum up to my ghost kick up here and turn the sound, uh, speaker off because I've got these sidechain plugins down here routed to those on my uh, bus for my synths. Just 
really let that kick drum come through some. Um, and then what I might do, um, let's see, what I might do on the kick drum is add a transient designer and up the attack a little bit. Doesn't need a ton of that. Um, but then I'm also going to slam it into a compressor here. It's an M-Presser from Universal Audio with a drums preset I like to use sometimes. So we're just getting like a 3 dBs of uh, gain reduction on the compressor. Doesn't sound too bad. Let's see if we can add a, um, <clears throat> a snare in here. Um, I'm also, I'll go back to that medicine sample pack because I think there's a couple of these layered snares that I like in here. Okay, that could work. That's actually kind of nice, uh, nice and crisp. Let's see what that sounds like in there. I'm going to send this to a return track that has a plate, a vintage plate reverb from Lexicon on here. Um, the way I set up my return tracks is just to use an auto filter to cut out all the low end and then have the effect set to full wet. Um, and then I've also got my sidechain compressors on here uh, to make sure any of that reverb is being sidechain compressed as well. So we'll get a little bit of that. Doesn't sound too bad. Let's find a snap that we could layer in there. Um, I'll just go to one of these cashmere packs again. I want to have some reverb on it. Let's see what that sounds like. And maybe I'll layer this one kind of every other every other one here. Another thing I'll do is hit this D button off here and up here and offset it by a few milliseconds. So it's not on top of the other one, but slightly after. Okay, cool. Um, another idea I have is to take this first sound and just put a big reverb on it. Um, Let's just use Ableton's reverb here. Whoa. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is resample this onto another audio track. So we'll set this up and just record that sound. We don't need this track anymore. I'm gonna go into this clip and hit rev, which reverses the sound. Um, and then I'm gonna kind of use this as a little bit of a texture um, on every other Maybe every other uh, snare sound here. Let's see what this sounds like. Kind of drop it in here a little bit. Yeah, something like this. Uh, let's see what this sounds like. Okay, and I'll drop it on this other one too. Sometimes what I like to do is uh, process my snares or percussive instruments. Also, weirdly enough, through Wave CLA guitar plugin. Um, and what I'll do is put this on the snare bus, set it to bypass, turn off the reverb, turn off the delay, turn off the stereo. Um, so it's just what we need. And that's gonna be a little loud. So I'm gonna turn this down. that snare a little bit of plate reverb too doesn't sound too bad and then maybe what I'll do is put this into a glue compressor slow down the attack a little bit okay that doesn't sound too bad let's see if we can add some percussion now um, for this I'm gonna go to arcade which is a plugin made by output it's basically a loop sample loop library um, and it gives you all these kind of uh, pre-made loops uh, with percussive sounds. There's this thing called Extra Perks, um, which has a bunch of these kind of like cool, weird little loops in it. Um, I kind of like that one. So let's see if we get that one in here. Um, let's see here. 
Okay, cool. And what I'm actually going to do is uh, resample that down to audio. So we have it in audio form. So we're not having to use this MIDI. Okay, I'll take this, create a little crossfade at the end. And let's just loop that and I'll go in here and kind of um, kill this arcade track. Okay, that sounds kind of cool. Um, maybe what I'll do is just add an EQ onto this, make sure there's no super low end coming through and I thought I could use a little more high end. And then let's try adding a kickstart to this as well. Uh, so we give it kind of that uh, bouncing effect. Um, obviously we're missing some bass, so let's go ahead and add some bass here. Um, actually thinking like an 808 bass could sound cool on this, even though it's not kind of an 808 really-ish sounding song. Some good ones in this Ramazoid pack. I like this one because it has some fuzz on it. Um, so I'm gonna drop that in there. Now it's way too long, so I'm gonna chop it in half, maybe twice. Okay. And then this is a C, so obviously it's a wrong note. It needs to be a C sharp. Um, so we'll boost that up a semitone. Actually sounds really low. Let me try going up to 13. Okay, cool. Um, and let's keep going with that. And I'll layer it just with the kick drums. Uh, this is gonna be two down. Um, this one's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be eight. And this one's just gonna be two down, so it's gonna go to six semitones above C. Uh, let's add little crossfades in the beginning of these to leave some space for that kick to punch through. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do, what I like to do with 808s a lot is go in and do some transposition modulation uh, or some pitch automation. So see if we can get, I kind of like it when it like kind of dips down like this. Let's see. That's cool. Let's do something similar to this one, maybe a little bit less. It's kind of cool. Let's play with this one. Maybe this does like a And then something similar on this last one here. Sounds pretty cool. Um, never a bad idea to run um, a sub bass or a bass into a glue compressor with a relatively slow attack. So All right, let's go with that for now. All right, cool, that's good for a start. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this whole thing. So now we have a longer loop and Let's see if we can add, I think this probably will need some kind of like transitional element here. So um, a good go-to for me is a reverse cymbal sound. Um, so let's go into here, reverse cymbals. I use this one a lot, so let's drop this in here and then get that into place. Okay, maybe like right here, so it's on B. Throw this texture in here too, whatever. That's cool, and maybe we introduce some more percussion in here, so I'm thinking like a hi-hat loop. Um, let's go into, this is our sample pack, by the way. It's Philo sample pack. You can find it on uh, SD or ADSR sounds. Um, this is kind of a good simple one, so let me plop this in here on an audio track. That transition. Um, let's see if we can maybe build like a little bit of an intro here. Um, what I'm going to do is copy this uh, first loop here and let's put it back here. Um, and then <clears throat> maybe we 
get rid of all the percussion in this part. And then maybe here all we need is that piano and the guitar. If we don't have any bass here. And then I'm gonna duplicate this. All right, these, th these guys are still here, but that's probably fine. Uh, let's do that. And I'm thinking maybe we add a kick drum right here and then actually have this 808 bass come in here in the intro. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, let's bring this in so it's going to come in where we want it to. Get my timing right here. And then I'm thinking what we need is some kind of drum fill or something to facilitate that transition. So uh, <clears throat> I like to use a lot of timbales. Um, let's go to splice here. Some of these are decent, I think. It's not the best sounding sample, but let's see how this goes here. Okay, we'll put that right there. And then um, I'm gonna add an EQ8 on this because it's got a lot of low end and not much high end. And then maybe what I'll do is add a reverb onto it, a fairly big reverb. Um, we'll just get that up a little. And then what I'll do is just automate the dry wet on the reverb so it comes in on that last hit. Uh, maybe we don't need it to be full. And then to bring that out even a little more, I'm gonna drop an OTT after the reverb and then do the same thing, kind of automate the dry or the uh, amount. And then what I'll do is kill the reverb and uh, OTT before that section of the song comes in. Um, and maybe just kill the track there too. See what that sounds like. So it's crisp. Okay, cool. That's not sounding too bad. Um, I've got an idea for like, um, <clears throat> maybe like a little vocal chomp here. Um, I've got kind of a melody in my head. Sometimes what I like to do when I think of a melody is just record it real quick. And I can't sing at all, so I apologize in advance for this. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is take a uh, effects rack that I've saved previously uh, for my vocal chops and drop that on there. Um, let's see, I've got this vocal chops effect thing and put it on here. I'm gonna put on this uh, bus here for all the vocal chops to go under. Um, and this has a bunch of stuff on it, it's got an EQ cutting out the low end, an OTT, a decapacitator plugin from Sound Toys, and then a Camel Crush adding some uh, saturation. Um, I like to spread my vocals so they're wide, or my chops so they're wider. So I've got a micro shift from Sound Toys, a uh, reverb, a little bit of delay, and a compressor, and a kickstart on there as well. <laughs> And just as I suspected, my voice sounds terrible, so I'm gonna have to pitch correct that a little bit. So let's run it through Melodyne here. Um, so I'll drop that on there. Um, and let's just like transfer that onto there. Okay, and then we can just go in and make sure these are the right notes here. Um, I'm gonna turn off the uh, pitch grid so there's no snap. All right, that's gonna have to do. Um, what I'm gonna do since it's in Melodyne now is resample it onto its own track uh, so we can get rid of the Melodyne. So I'll record that. And then we can get rid of the Melodyne here. Um, so we've got this now. Um, I'm gonna turn the effects back on. <laughs> and then I'm gonna play with the pitch a little bit. I'm gonna add uh, Sound Toys, a little Alter Boy. Um, and let's see what happens if kind of picture. All 
Um, let's see here, though. Uh, I've got a um, this vocal chop uh, thing I saved previously, which basically has a bunch of vocal chops on it um, that I like. Let's mess around with layering these some of these in here. Uh, the other thing is, this is actually an E minor. Um, these are all in E minor from a previous song. So I'm going to add a little Ultra Boy on here. And we need to go up to uh, A flat minor. So I'm going to pitch this up by four semitones. And let's see if we can kind of mimic that, uh, that melody a little bit. It's actually not terrible. This is playing for too long, so I'm going to go in here and make sure that it's not the release is down. And let me just make sure I'm getting the timing right. Slide these a little bit over. Um, I think what I want to do is actually in the intro, just kind of filter this in. So I'm going to use an auto filter for that. Um, so we will kind of let this filter in. It's not too bad. Uh. filter off there all right I'm uh, decently happy with that for now um, let's play around with some more vocal chops using like this uh, one of these same racks that I saved before um, again we're gonna have to go in and make sure that this is uh, pitched correctly all right let me let me uh, just copy this one and then put it on here since we know we're going up four semitones and then we can kind of play around with some of these sounds it's gonna let me do it oh here we are I'm just going to go into the verse here and see if we can add some of these. And then what I'm going to do is I want this next one, this the beginning of the next one, to be an octave lower. Um, so I'm going to copy this one onto another one. And then we will switch this note on this one to, to that new one, which is currently the same. Um, but then I'm going to try uh, pitching it down, maybe an octave. About. That first one I pitched down sounds a little weird, so maybe we'll play with the format here and automate it a little bit. Uh, what happens if we what happens if we drop that a little bit? Nice. Let's see. That's pretty cool. Um, all right, so let's see uh, one more thing I might add um, in terms of the synths going on here um, is maybe like a plucky sound. I'm thinking like a plucky sound could sound cool. Let me get these MIDI notes on here and then uh, let me find a pluck. Actually, just to make things quick, I think there's one that I saved from that same Wheat Thin remix that I made. Um, so this is just um, it's actually a pluck that I made in uh, Serum, and all it is is this noise oscillator with a bell synth. Um, sounds like it kind of gives a nice pluck sound. Increase the transient desire on that a little bit. Uh, 
And then these, obviously, because we're doing a pluck, these are going to have to be pretty short. So let's shorten these out a little bit. Here. Should I raise it up an octave? Yeah, you know, maybe that doesn't come in, uh, maybe that doesn't come in until here, until those hi-hats come in. Cool, and if this was, this was a real song, I'd probably duplicate this a few times for the verse. Cool, all right, so let's, uh, I'm ha pretty happy with that for like a beginning of a verse at least. Let's go ahead and see if we can make like a breakdown here. So I'm gonna kill a lot of these sounds. Um, Let's definitely kill the uh, percussion. Uh, even that ghost kick I'll get rid of. Um, and then of course maybe no, no hi-hats or anything in this part. And then maybe what I'll do is just copy this, uh, this timbale thing uh, for a little transition there. And then I think we need a different bass in here. Uh, this is carrying over. I don't know if you heard that carrying over, so I'm gonna kill it right here. Maybe we keep that going there. Um, so let's create a different bass here because I think we could use something else. Um, so I'm just gonna go to the old serum here. Uh, let's go into serum and then um, I'm gonna try like a re-sounding bass. So I've got this preset here. Um, and then let's grab the, uh, the MIDI notes for that and then just uh, delete everything except for those root notes. All right, it's gonna be real aggressive. Let's bring the uh, cut off a little bit. And then actually what I'm gonna do here is uh, EQ this and then just cut out the low end on this guy here. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, um, and then I'm gonna add, well, let's add a decapacitator on that. Or Sorry, it's not decapacitator. I keep saying that and one of you guys told me that and my bad, it's decapitator. I gotta start saying that right. Um, let's see if there's a bass preset here. Decatapitator. Decatapitator. All right, what I'm gonna do is uh, create another track here, another MIDI track, and then add a sub bass underneath that. So for that, I like to use Ableton's hip hop sub bass a lot of the time. Just a nice clean uh, sub bass. And we're gonna have to drop these down a few octaves. Okay, there's that. And then uh, let's add it some uh, tone or distortion. Let's increase the attack a little bit. And then another thing I'm gonna do here is add an EQA onto this. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna cut out any of the high end above where I cut out the low end of that other sound, if that makes sense. So there's nothing clashing between these two bases. So I'll go like uh, somewhere in here. It's real smooth. I'm gonna group these two sounds together because they're basically the same sound here. Um, and then again with the sub bass, uh, never a bad idea to run it into a glue compressor with a slow attack. If somebody knows what soft clip does on the glue compressor, let me know in a comment because I don't really know what it does, but I always turn it on because uh, I've seen other people do it. So, uh, And then maybe this needs a kickstart on it. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Let's 
sure. I don't see why not. And then let's bring these back in here as well. Uh, maybe with that filter on again. Not super stoked with these vocal chop sounds, but I'm not going to spend too much time working on it. Uh, because I've copied and pasted so many times, we're getting those uh, sweeps and stuff coming through where they probably shouldn't be. Um, oh yeah, there's also way, just way too many of them in here, so. Um. Do we need the acoustic guitar in here? if there's any like um, wind chimes we could add in that transition. Do I have any wind chimes? What is that? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, uh, let's see if we can add that in. I'll add it in my kind of sweeps and effects thing here um, for that transition into the... I don't see why not. So there's a little breakdown there. Um, I would make a drum build, but usually drum builds take me hours to make. So um, I've got some pre-made drum builds saved here from previous songs. Um, actually, this one is from that Wheat Thin remix I made as well. Um, so let me drum build thing. Let's drop this in here. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen here. I don't know what this is going to sound like dynamically. I'm going to compress it down a little more. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. So, but um, I think where we want it to come in is right there. So if I take this and then copy it, delete it, and put it where I think it should be. Okay, cool. Um, so we're gonna keep this going in here. Um, okay, and what I will do is start bringing in more, filtering in these vocals a little more. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in those synths uh, that we had previously um, when those drums come in. And there's gonna be a drop there. So I think there needs to be more of kind of like a rising going on here. So I'm gonna go into my sidechain thing here and add some risers. Um, Let's see if we can find a couple risers that we can plop in there. Um, I'm not going to work too long on a drop because I don't want to uh, make this go on forever. Um, I don't know. I'm not too picky with risers. That's a tonal riser. Let's see here. And then let's just drop one more riser on there. I think I've got some like uh, go to's here. Uh, go to samples, maybe riser. I don't know. Let's drop this in there. Um, let's see here. I'll create a little fade on the end of it here. Turn it down, so. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. And then maybe another thing we could do is add a, um, uh, I don't always, I try not, to, I try to avoid this sometimes, but let's throw an auto filter on the master uh, for this build here. And then what I will do is slowly start cutting out the low end as we get closer to the drop. Um,
Okay, cool. And I'm gonna make sure the auto filter is actually off when the drop comes in. Okay, cool. Just trying to make sure nothing's carrying over, bleeding over too much of the drop. We're gonna have it. Um, so, and then another thing sometimes I do on a drop is just like dip out the volume a little bit right before the drop hits uh, with a little bit of automation. Okay, so give it some impact and dynamic there. Um, let's go ahead and get to the drop here. Um, again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Um, I'll set up a loop here. Um, and then let's go in and maybe I'll just grab like a good old cashmere kick here. Uh, something that's a good to go to. Um, that's not too bad. I don't like kicks that have it too much like uh, that are too long. Okay, pretty simple. Um, let's go ahead and find a snare. Let's just find like a super future bassy sounding snare. Um, let's try one of these, not a drum loop, not a clap. Let's see. Um, Let's see some of these crane ones. Okay, that's a pretty future bassy sounding sound. Put that on here, make sure it's got its own track. Is it gonna go right there? No, it's gonna go right there. Looks like we can just duplicate that. And then let's like add a uh, another future bassy sounding snare of some sort, like layer it with something. Something that has a little bit more, more to it. I guess that's not too bad. Let's layer that in there and see how that goes. Um, so I'm just gonna layer that in there, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm gonna offset it a little bit from that other sound. Let's give him some reverb. And how about we take this sound that I created before, this reverse sound, and kind of uh, layer it in there and every other one so we get that Okay, and then maybe we will need in the drop um, those hi-hats that we had previously. So let's drop those in. Okay, cool. Um, and then maybe what else are we gonna need in here? Um, probably gonna need like a down sweep or white noise or something like that. So let me just create a new track and look for like a down sweep in uh, here. Kind of like that one, it's just simple. Okay, and then maybe we add like a crash symbol in there as well. Um, we'll try that one. Sounds like it had a little bit of low end in it, so I'm gonna go in and just EQ, make sure that there's no low end in that. Um, turn, it, turn it down some. Okay, and then maybe we need like a little bit of a, like a simple drum fill in there, some toms. Let me see if I can find a tom. Uh, go in here. I guess these aren't terrible. Let's see here. Uh, let's grab this other one for right here. Let me just make sure you're using these crossfades here. Maybe we'll add a little bit of pan to that. So one of them is a little bit to the right, one of them is a little to the left. Uh, maybe we'll add a little bit of a uh, saturator on there. I might also use a transient designer on toms like this to make the attack come out more. Uh, 
Um, and then what about like a little bit of like a snare roll, like right before that? I wonder what this would sound like, like right before that. Let's see. And then we maybe need like another another uh, snare going on in there to create some rhythm. Um, okay, cool. Let's make a synth real quick here. Um, I'm gonna go down here and sometimes what I like to do is like create like a saw synth or something like that that I can actually use in the build as well. Um, so let's copy and paste that MIDI. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just add a blank serum on here. Turn on the oscillator B. Let's look for a different shape here. Um, I'm going to add some of this. Let's drop an LFO on here so we can make it move around a little bit. Give him some voices. Detune him a little bit. A little bit less attack. Got a few different shapes here. Maybe add a little bit of white noise or something like that. Um, let me just kill those. The air can. Something simple like that. And then I'm gonna add, um, well, let's, uh, let's saturate it a little bit. Uh, let's slam it into an OTT. Um, and then let's make sure we EQ out the super low end from that because we will have a bass in this section as well. Let's go like this. And then I'll leave this in the uh, in the build and just filter it in. Um, so let's do this. Okay, and then finally what I'll do is go into Serum here and add an effect. I'm gonna add the Hyper Dimension Expander thing here. A little bit of that. Make sure we kill the auto filter in the drop here because I'm gonna use this in the drop. Kill it right there, okay. And let's make these kind of, uh, oh shoot, I copied the piano thing again. Well, that's all right. Bring them up an octave. In fact, maybe. And then maybe what I'll do is go in here and um, drop this detune, drop an LFO on the detune to detune it. Detune it, the longer it plays, the more it'll, well, as it goes through that LFO, it'll detune. Let's just add some bass in there. All right, 
cool. Um, maybe what I'll do is like, I don't know, try out some different saw sounds on this. I just created that really quickly. So it's not, um, it's not great. Um, so maybe what I would do is try out adding something I saved from something a long time ago, maybe in there. Tasty saw. What is that? is maybe we have these vocals keep going in that drop so let's duplicate these uh turn off that auto filter on there so it's i'm getting the Plucks back in. All right, guys, I think I'm going to stop there. Let's take a listen to what we have. I think I'm pretty happy with this overall. It's a good start to something. Yep, and now that saw is too loud. Um. guys uh not bad for like an hour or whatever this was um maybe it was a little longer than that um but uh yeah so i'm gonna stop there hopefully this was useful for some of you guys we really appreciate all the support we're getting on these videos um again if you haven't checked out philo you can check us out on spotify or soundcloud.com slash philo music also check out our other tutorials and uh thanks again guys we appreciate the support on these and leave some comments below and give me some production tips or uh ask me some more questions about what i did here so i really appreciate it guys and uh have a good one we'll see you soon